Um, an investigation, celebration, and exploration of Jeff Goldblum's cinematic career. I'm Seb. I'm Liam. I'm Beth. So, Death Wish. Enjoy a typical afternoon in New York City. Who is it? This is Paul Kersey. This is the story of a man who decided to clean up the most violent town in the world. I said, turn around. Hand me the money. He begins where all the super cops leave off. I think it was probably my favourite film out of all the ones we've watched for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Do you feel differently? Oh, it may be. Uh... Just probably going on like the terms of just a film I would watch again out of the four that we watched this time. I would say that's probably the one I would go to watch again if I... Well, actually, no, it would definitely be the only one I would probably watch again after watching these four. Yes. Uh, yes. I have... I actually really, really enjoyed one of the other ones. Yeah. Um, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, although I think this one has a banging soundtrack because it's Herbie Hancock. Yeah, Herbie Hancock did do the soundtrack to that, actually. Um, and there's an interesting thing I saw about that was that the the director whose name I fucking cannot remember at all right now I'll find that um, said he wanted like a cheap English band to do the soundtrack <laughs> and then the dude that was like finding people to do it was like oh here's Herbie Hancock apparently is that is how you feel that criteria why did he want a cheap English band I don't know that was just <laughs> like a what... fantastic <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was just what apparently was like the vibe he wanted to go for with that interesting yeah, I'd say the music for me was like the most enjoyable part. I can't um, even remember the music. Oh, it was great. There was one scene where it was like felt really weirdly out of place, um, which I think I made a note of it somewhere. Oh, he yeah. did get a uh, Grammy nomination for the best score for Good. this film. Good. I don't think he won really? it, but he just got okay. the nomination. Yeah, no, it was a great. It was a great soundtrack. Yeah. Um, there, there was one scene where it was like some crazy funk when there was uh, just like a very slow car going around and he wasn't really I, doing yeah, much. Yeah, I, I do remember really that. intense funk tune. Yeah. I thought the whole, the, the entire intro was just pure, unneeded exposition. Like the whole, well, f- the first 10 minutes. Okay, let's quickly, let's do this then to sort of preface it. Beth, what was the story? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Charles Bronson yeah. on a beach with his his wife who Fuck. he loves yeah I forgot about that he loves yeah. his wife and she's got a great body and he <laughs> takes some photos of her and, and, and she, she says goes something about being fat she says you're not going to show those to anyone are you and he goes oh, why yeah. not you've got a wonderful figure <laughs> and she goes she goes something like oh no I haven't I, I can't remember oh, what she that, says that was Joanna yeah Joanna Kiersey is like his wife isn't it yeah it and then so so she uh, they go home of back of holiday mm. and um, she gets brutally raped and murdered mm. and mm. her watches her own daughter get raped and it's horrific it's honestly one of the most horrific it is rapes pretty horrible I've ever man. seen I'm yeah. really so upset that Jeff was really involved bad. in that Jeff you know? Goldblum in his first ever yeah because Jeff was what Hood 3 wasn't he, was he yeah. Yeah. he's Hood 3 he's the he one who says uh, yeah he does he does it's do that it's horrific the fact they keep calling it like they keep referring to her as mother is so, horrible so yeah. um, it the mother thing also pops up again in St. Ives. Does it? Oh, because it's the same director, isn't it? That it's did the both same of director that did both of those things. Um, there's and a few motifs that appear. Yeah, and there's a there's them. a dude that is right at the beginning of St. Ives, and he just shouts out of a window, being like, get away from my car, you mothers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's kind of, it is just part of that kind Era. of... Hey, the mother. Because it's because it was there was the mum and a daughter, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. I don't know. That's pretty why they're referring yeah, to yeah. that. But it made me so sad that Jeff was involved in that. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It was really upsetting. He, clear, I, he, was, he did a really good job. I've put down. I, actually, one thing I said, I could not really concentrate on his character that much because of how much he looked like a young Che Guevara. <laughs> 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 he looks exactly like yeah. Che Guevara in this movie. Um, but I put the minus is that his character fucking sucks. Yeah. But the plus is we see Jeff's butt. It's it's an interesting scene, and then they they scarper, and uh, the two, I think the daughter lives, but she's like mm. mentally inept and really wounded from the experience. Yeah, yeah, and like she from can't PTSD. Communicate. I found like a bunch of things in this movie because there's a lot of like heavy scenes, especially in this first like act yeah. of a setup. Mm. But I found there were so many of like the 
the B actors and like the people that were like the surgeons or the doctors that just fully took me out of how serious this was supposed <laughs> oh, totally. to be. It's really rough. There's all the characters in the hospital are just absolutely nuts. There's one quote, which I think is probably the best line from the whole film, which I wrote down, which is a man, he's, a, he's waiting in the hospital. Um, and God knows why he's in a hospital. He's talking about his sick dog. And he says, But why haven't you found my dog? He's vital to my income. He paints such marvelous pictures with his paws. I remember that man. <laughs> he looked like a pimp. <laughs> oh, you know, I just oh, realized yeah. they're in the police they are station. in the police station. My bad. They're in the police station. That's why he's waiting for his dog. Still yeah. ridiculous. I mean, so we've never been to... Does it state what city this is in? Uh, yeah, it's in New York. Is it in New York? Yeah, because right. he gets off the plane and oh, yeah. the guy comes up to oh, him. And he's like, you look like you're from New York. Yeah. <laughs> you, you look like you're... <laughs> based, oh, yeah. So, so what I've got here is a New York City architect becomes a one-man vigilante squad. Yeah. After his wife is murdered by street punks, in which he randomly goes out and kills would-be muggers on the mean yeah. streets after dark. It's a, it's a, it's a, a vi- vigilante action thriller with film noir elements. Yeah, and with I, what is a, basically a wooden puppet as your fucking protagonist. Oh, he's I, great. I, he? I, I kind of would have liked more of the noir. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna come out and say that of the four films we've watched, um, yes. this is my, le- this is my third least enjoyable film ever. Of of these four. Your third least enjoyable. So film. your second favorite? No, sorry, no, <laughs> no. I think I think. Why don't you just say things normally? <laughs> it's it. If one is the best and four is the worst of these four ones you just watched, it's yeah. number three. Oh, okay. Um, I felt like this film, it it kind of, it had a really unobtrusive commentary about the repercussions of suppressing your emotions hmm. and how negative that is. Yeah, the sort of and how... toxic masculinity thing. Yeah, yeah. About your but shit. it didn't quite go deep enough to make any like profound statements Everything's about it. Everything's very surface it level of, in this, It was man. very surface. It was very like tip of the iceberg. You, you could sense that there was so much more going on, but it didn't yeah. quite go deep enough. And I think that's because it was based on a novel. I think that had a real impact. I didn't actually know it was based off a novel. Yeah, so that's I think that happened. really affected it interesting thing about this is probably my favorite thing about this movie and it's got nothing to do with really what was actually on screen <laughs> but so charles bronson's character is called paul kiersey right mm. uh, they got that name from an extra that was coming in it's his actual name it's just an extra that was on set and they really liked the name so they put that into the film and his only request for them to use his name was that he would be an extra in every scene that needed an extra so I need to go back and look through, but there is going to be the exact same guy in every scene every that just scene. has extras in. That's incredible. That was his only like condition That's for brilliant. them to use his name, and I thought that was fucking. They probably incredible. offered him like a lot of money. Yeah. And he was probably like, "No, I'll just, I'll just be take, you. Take, take a swig on this <laughs> acting career. <laughs> just put me in everywhere. Hey, I rate, I rate the man and his audacity. Yeah. Mm. This film is very pro guns, isn't it? Yeah. When they when they go to the the shooting club. Yeah. Um, it just struck me as very much like guns are what make you powerful. Yeah. The only thing separating him from anyone else in in the city is that he has a gun. <laughs> yeah, that and that he has some coins in a sock. Yes, Mate, that's found... a powerful scene when he's like beating up his apartment with the oh, sock. Oh, I was absolutely pissing myself. <laughs> when that scene that was I feel like this film. I found this film way funnier yeah. than it was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be because there is that yeah. moment where he's yeah he's yeah. swinging that uh, like made weapon at home with the socks mm. and it's just it's supposed to be like this proper rising hero moment you know of him just like oh this is him starting to take an action of his own yeah. he just looks like a fucking child just swinging a toy about yeah. honestly he just absolutely destroys a plant and then it cuts to another scene <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah is Charles Bronson supposed to be a well respected actor I, I think so is he but he's bad he's bad I feel he's like he's so always but he's good at that like he was good at that he felt like a, a like a very daddish James Bond I'd say <laughs> and push it was just if I'm like, complimenting him but even like in St. Ives later on he's just the exact same dude like, yeah. oh yeah he's more talkative in St. Ives yeah mm. but he's, this was just I thought wooden as hell from him man like um, who was in the surgery at some point they were trying to save oh uh, yeah he shoots he shoots a mugger that, but he doesn't die um, uh. and he says in his dying words something about he's cut he like he got a hit in on the vigilante. Or oh whatever. right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, and I remember that, that. This is just another one of those like medical professionals in this movie that are just completely <laughs> like the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen in a movie. Because uh, 
and it's the weirdest setup. You can tell it's just a random like office they've turned into a surgery because you have like the the one window going into where they're operating on this guy and the door's just open to it and then you see the surgeon working on it and it like pans out and the surgeon walks out and it's just super chip and he's like nope can't save him <laughs> oh my god it's so ridiculous it's classic and I feel like all of these films from this era that are centred around like an office you know because he's what he's an architect in this yeah yeah, um, why the fuck is he even an architect? Who well, apparently that was a change that Charles Bronson wanted to make because I can't remember in the book there was a different profession that the guy okay. was, but apparently it wasn't manly enough, so they changed it to architect. the architect. Is that's that particularly what manly? I have, I don't know, you're drawing buildings. Drawing buildings. Yeah, but he apparently, in his eyes, thought that was more of like a yeah, big buildings, Fair big enough. dicks. You know? It wouldn't have mattered whatever <laughs> profession they gave him. It just didn't contribute anything. No, it was anything. not relevant. Not it could have just been an office. Yeah. You know, other than the there's fact always that he... a, a ringing phone in an office in yeah. every 70s movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, there always just has to be that phone in the background Busy that no one's ever going to answer, people. you know? Um, Jeff was only in this film for 2 minutes and 57 seconds. I mean, I'm kind of glad about that because he sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, he's, he does a good job in the film as an actor, but I just his character just saddens me. So I, I gave this a zero for True Bloom. Yes, I would agree with that. I don't know. I feel like... The, the the tongue action that he does at the, oh, he looks it's very very he, Jeff isn't he looks it? yeah that's true actually and he also he jumps like he into wanted to the, eat he jumps into the camera with a mouthful of crisps <laughs> I feel like that's very I don't know Jeff personally but I feel yeah. like that's something he would do and I'd he, be happy he, to give it a one he does do the tongue flick doesn't he mm. yeah I've seen him do that in, in yeah he does that else. he does that in some other that's things that's true I didn't yeah. pick up on that tongue flick that's a he, he lizard tongues the shop assistant that's a Jeffism um, <laughs> A that bloomism? Is a Jeffism. A Jeffism. Uh, so yeah, what have we all given for True Bloom? I gave it a two. A one. A one, okay, I gave it a zero. Fair. So I, I can... guess just go for one is like a general yeah. consensus. Yes. I, think, I, think... <laughs> I told you it was a competition. Uh, Beth's, Beth's winning. One point to Beth. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's move on to the next category then. So for craft, mm. like how well do you think this film was made, you know? Can I just say this film fails the Bechdel test? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't yeah. surprise me. Terribly. For those of you that don't know what the Bechdel test is, it has to involve two women with uh, names having a conversation in a room about something other than a man. Isn't it for like at least a minute and a half? No, it actually isn't because I looked really? up the the actual definition. It doesn't have to be for any amount of time. Oh, but okay. I think it should be. I think it should be for at least fucking two minutes of the film. Because you know? it could just be like ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Because some films pass based solely on that kind of interaction. Yeah. Just like at a shop or something. Yeah. What did each of us give craft? Like the vote of craft. Is that a nine, isn't it? So Out of nine. I'd probably give it more than the blooms the bloom scale. Mm. So yeah. pro- probably I was a feeling three. A, I was feeling a three or a four. The exactly audio really let well. it down though. The audio really let it down. Straight up. I mean yeah. but the it music was, was literally the shining light. Yeah, the music was great. Mm. I, I love the music. It was fucking great. Um yeah. they deserve that Grammy nom for it. Yeah, great um, soundtrack. Yeah, when I say audio I mean like all the all the sound design and, and dialogue yeah. and everything was bad. So enjoyability as well is the next one. <laughs> I really fucking enjoyed it, yeah. to be honest. How what was you... it out of again? A ten. I'll give it a ten. Really? Well wow. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Beth, that's a lie. Out of out of these four films, not out of all films ever. <laughs> no, obviously this is, this I is enjoyed the general Yeah, this out is out of, of like all 10. films ever. Oh. Oh okay. It's not just out of these four <laughs> who are doing this episode. Out of all films ever, probably a five. That's still pretty high. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of ten. I'm going to go three. Okay. So are we agreeing at a four? I guess yeah. so. That's how yeah. it works, right? Ah, oh, Liam, yeah. you won. <laughs> <laughs> One point to Liam. One point yeah, to it's Liam. Just, like, I would no have given it yet. lower if there weren't a lot of moments in this film that didn't make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I enjoyed it, not in the way that it was supposed to be enjoyed. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Laughing at all the incompetent people in this film was mm. really what kept me going. Yeah, totally. Um, so, Seb. Yes. Come forward with your theories. Um, so, I don't think, based on watching these four films, that the chronological order of films that Jeff has been in is actually the true time order of how he exists. <laughs> okay. Um, because I believe that this is at a point where Jeff has taken a wrong turn somewhere, and he's trying to... <laughs> His subconscious is warning us of that, but he's not aware of it. I was wondering how you were going to spin this. He's he's fallen into a bad crowd, um, and I and I believe that some of these films that we are going to speak about next, he's still within that bad crowd. Um, 
Although I feel like he does take a journey. So at this point in time, I'm going to say, if we're saying that, like, because I do believe he does exist eternally and outside of time. So I, I feel like that this is an escapade of his that took a wrong turn and he regrets it now. Do you think he's on track to the right path? No, this is going to be one of those uh, low moments. Point. Yeah, this is going to be the low moment where he realises that he needs to turn around. Oh, and he does a full U-turn. Yeah, yeah this is the uh, lowest yeah. moment. I mean, raping someone in the mouth is a pretty low moment. I, 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 Arguably the lowest of moments. I'm going to be honest, I don't think in the in the other 180-something films that he's been in, Six, he's, like 60 something he's going to do something worse. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. I think this might be his lowest point. Yeah. I think we're starting at the very lowest point of the trench. <laughs> That's very Progression true. is not always linear. This is very true. Sometimes you fuck up a, in a big, huge, nasty way mm. before you return to being a golden ray of light. Nice. <laughs> I cool. think that's. I think that's what they say. I think that's the old saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sons, Jeff. What would this film be? It wouldn't have happened if Jeff didn't exist. Yeah, it literally wouldn't. Literally, be a nothing thing. would have happened <laughs> if Jeff wasn't in this film. Yeah, he mate. literally. He drove every every action. But I still believe Paul, Charles, Bro- Charles Bronson, mm-hmm. would have found another excuse to do some bad shit. I don't know. I think this was such a, a unique situation for him to be in. Yeah. Maybe that it drove him like to Charles it. Bronson. I just think he just comes across as a bit of a dick to me in these films. But then do you think that... Yeah, I agree. Do okay, you think yeah. the director was perhaps trying to say that this, this inner revenge force is in all men that are uh, suppressing their emotions and it just takes something like this to trigger it no I personally I think it's a film about how if you're upper middle class and own a gun you can do what you want yeah <laughs> oh, fair enough <laughs> yeah I think that fits it maybe a bit more with how he is and how especially how the police treat him mm. yeah because he do you know how does how does Charles Bronson deal with his grief gun <laughs> he deals gun with his and grief coin sock yeah <laughs> So, yeah, what is one thing you would change about this film? The casting of <laughs> Charles Bronson. <laughs> yeah, I'm not far off that. Beth? I don't think I would change a single thing about this film. Really? Fucking bold claim. That is a bold claim. <laughs> because I feel like, because there's so many rough bits and there's so, there's so much that goes against it, but it, it, it's so complete as, as it is, yeah. you know? Which of these other bad films are we going to talk about next? Yeah, so we have you given that like 5 out of 11. Yeah, 5 like out of 11. Yes. Thing. Baseline. Cool. Yeah. Agreed. So the next film we watched was California Split. <sighs> okay. Well. Where Jeff Goldblum plays a character called Lloyd Harris. Yes. Does he even? I will admit, <laughs> I missed his cameo the first oh, time. I I'm pretty sure film. I missed it every time. I Can got I... to the end and I was like, wait, what the fuck? When was that? And it took me so long to scrub through this movie to try and find out where his cameo was. Can I start with how much Jeff for this? Okay. 9.5 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he is... And how long is the film? Good question. It's like nearly two hours. Uh, I'll it's find like an hour one. and a half. It's a long it's film. It's longer than that. Is it? Is it longer? Than that? Okay. It's nearly three hours. It's fuck got off, that's a Nashville. solid. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about the wrong film. No, it's still very long. I thought I was thinking about Nashville, uh, California Split, Nashville. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can we just start this again? Yeah. I really fucked up. California Split is yeah. what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> okay. He, yep. Can I just point out before we say anything, mm-hmm. how fucking beautiful is Jeff Goldblum in this film? <laughs> yeah, he actually is a beautiful, He's beautiful so man. Beautiful. Really fancy boy. Really, mm. really beautiful. Beautiful features yeah. in this film. For some reason, just stood out to me. And what I found weird was I was looking through like the the trivia and things that I could find from this film, and uh, there was a thing about yeah, Robert Altman who directed this movie. Mm-hmm. He discovered Jeff in a play called El Grande de Coca-Cola, which just means the big Coca-Cola. Um, and he discovered him in that play and then was like, I need him in this film. And then puts him in there for nine and a half seconds. Yeah, what's that about? I just didn't understand it. Uh, this be- film is an hour and 48 minutes long. Okay. Okay. It felt longer. It did. It felt a lot longer. I'm going to be honest, it took me about three or four goes to actually fully watch it and pay attention. It was, yeah, it's quite dry, man. Like I felt like the- it, it meandered along... At its own kind of pace. This film doesn't really concern itself with plot. Mm. So on that note, Seb, what was the plot of this film? So, <laughs> I'm going to come out and be controversial and say that I quite liked this film. Really? <laughs> yeah, I genuinely really quite liked this film. Um, 
it's actually the one I have the most notes about as well. Really? But they're I just struggled with But this. they're just train of thought notes. But the plot of this film is there is a I'm forgetting the actors' names. Uh, so you've got Elliot Gould who plays Charlie Waters, who's yes. the, and then who's like the more gambly man. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. You have uh, George Segal who plays Bill Denny, who's like the dude with longer hair. Yeah. So Elliot Gould's character. By the way, I thought Elliot Gould was amazing in this. Yeah, I thought he was incredible. I thought his performance was actually really, really good. As much yeah. as I didn't really enjoy this film overall, I mm. thought that he was actually like the shining light in this film. Yeah, I thought his Agreed. performance was great. I think the film is uh, is his film. I think it's a film mm. about his character. Mm. Um, so essentially the the plot of the film is he's this gambling dude he meets another gambling dude uh, they encourage each other to make bad life choices and spend <laughs> their money in unwise ways um, and I think they should fuck <laughs> I've written multiple times in my notes that those two should fuck <laughs> um, because there is a large amount of homoeroticism that happens it, there's some weird tension in this film, isn't there? Like, yeah. Weird. There is a weird sexual tension with they all rub, the characters. They rub cream over each other. Mm. Onto each other's <laughs> hot bodies. After they've been beaten up the night before. Yeah. That's true, they do do that. I remember that. I felt the first half of this film just dragged, really. Yeah. Yeah, first, agreed. I'd say even first three quarters at a push, first two thirds, I'd say probably just... I was struggling to get through. It sort of picks up towards the end when they kind of when they get that like winning streak at that casino towards yeah. the end and like that was I was actually quite getting into it towards that like the climax of it but I was kind of also sad that the rest of the film hadn't dragged me in yeah. as much so my, my biggest complaint about the film is how noisy it is um, I really struggled with that like <laughs> I couldn't focus on who was saying anything yeah it was just struggling to keep my attention because yeah. it, it, it just felt like disconnected you know the yeah. audio was very disconnected to what I was watching so it was quite difficult to sort of pass a lot of the shit mm. that was going on in that. Um, one thing I found quite funny was because George Segal wasn't really hadn't really done much gambling mm. much in his life before this film so Robert Altman wanted him to feel the pain of losing so he set him up on a professional poker table and he wiped up and didn't lose anything and just won the entire <laughs> game <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was great yeah that's great so, yeah it's okay no, I was going to say, I'm just looking through my notes, and I have a couple of quotes just from throughout the film that cr- absolutely crack me the fuck up. There's one that has my favourite line in this entire movie as I th- well. I think I know which one it is. <laughs> I think I know which one it is. It was... Uh... God damn it, lady, you don't throw oranges on an escalator! <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely it. It was the best line of this whole movie, mate. <laughs> Was um, that when he steals her bag or yeah. something? Yeah. Well, she throws her bag at him. Yeah, she throws her bag at him. He makes um, her lose money on a horse. Yeah, he he makes her lose money on the horse. Yeah. yeah. By betting <laughs> on the wrong one. It's, kind of, it it's kind of, it's like, it's quite endearing in the way that it shows them just getting into absolute kerfuffles. Like, yeah. they really screw over a lot of people. Really, They're really selfish, but yeah. it's always quite funny. And I think that is just the credit to Elliot Gould more than anything. Just mm. his charisma and the way that he plays this character. Because I thought the other dude, mm. um, George Segal playing Bill Denny, was a bit wooden as well. I thought he was okay, yeah. but without like the the veracity and how uh, veracity I should say and how like excitable Elliot Gould. Elliot was Gould that. seemed to care. Yeah, maybe because he had more stakes in this because maybe. it was he knew the guy that wrote it and it was a bit more based off yeah. there. And I've only ever really seen Elliot Gould as the dad in Friends, like Monica's dad yeah. in Friends. Oh, I was gonna say he's in. Um, oh no, it's Friends. Yeah, it's Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I was like searching for something else, but no. Yeah, it's Friends. He was in Friends. But he still looks the same. Yeah, he hasn't really... He's aged quite well, I'd say. I'd say he's aged well. Elliot Gould actually appears twice in our series of films today. Yeah, he has a cameo in the fucking... In Nashville. Nashville, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah he Which does. is really strange because that's obviously the next film we watch. So I thought yeah, that was yeah. it threw me off actually slightly. Yeah. yeah. And also, he gets punched later on. Hmm. Um, and he says that's the best punch I've ever received. It's the greatest punch I ever been hit with. <laughs> that's a great, what a great line. Which is a really good line. Yeah, it's the best way. Yeah. I did enjoy the script. It was just hard to invest Focus in it on. because it was so messy and yeah. so noisy, and there was so much going on. It was hard to like zone into one mm. one track. Mm. There are some nice moments looking back on it that were quite enjoyable. But yeah. get my I don't friend think, here a bit. I don't think get I could sit through bit. this whole movie again. Yeah. Oh no, God no. I oh no, I don't want to. But I, I enjoy it. I enjoyed couldn't, the single watch. Wouldn't, would never. <laughs> <laughs> a scene I really, really liked, actually, um, is when they've just won some money, something, and they have the, the two women with them, and um, 
they they're essentially just getting mugged again outside. Mm. Yeah. And he's like, "Look, hold on, you can have half of it. Yeah. Like, let us keep half. <laughs> you have half." Yeah, it's, um, it shows that how desperate they are. They're like bartering yeah. with their, so their, their life. life like they put it above everything. I think that's like yeah. that's what the film is getting at: is that people that are in this cycle just like put it above everything. Matters above all. For me, like I don't really care about plot too much. I never really pay attention to plot, and like, I never care about spoilers. But for mm. me, it's more like having those moments, and mm. it just didn't have enough. Just the plot beats moments. to tie onto and swing off, you know, like yeah. to have like yeah. a nice little turning point, so just something to be, to just keep you invested. Whereas I struggled in this first half of the movie, man, mm. to really stay afloat, which mm. is how I missed the cameo of Jeff Goldblum in the first place. So who actually does he play? Because I can't he's remember. A do- he's a doctor, or something. No, so I'm so he's, I'm pretty sure he's like. The Lloyd Harris was the name of his the character. publisher or something at the magazine that Bill Denny's character works for. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so Bill Denny comes in and he's like, "Oh, does the guy want to see me?" Yeah. Um, and the lady behind the the like second the secretary is just like, "Yeah, he asked for you earlier." And then he goes upstairs and he's like, "Hot, oh, okay." And then, literally the next second, yeah. Jeff Goldblum walks out and he's like, "Hey, is he here? Can I see is him?" Is that him? Oh, he was, sir. Did you tell him I wanted to see him? I did, sir. What did he say? He said thank you. He did. He did. Thank you. <laughs> With his beautiful face. With his beautiful. I, so I for wrote... True Bloom, I gave this. I was going to give it four out of eight to just be completely neutral because there's yeah. no way you can tell. But I gave it five out of eight because he looks fresh as fuck. Yeah, I would go five. Yeah. I think five's solid because I I wrote in all caps when I saw that is just Jeff, two exclamation marks. What a fancy boy. Yeah, he's fresh as hell in this. Movie, um, yeah, man. he looks incredible. Incredibly fancy. Uh, craft. How well do you think this film was made? I think this was made pretty well. Yeah. See, I i don't think so. I think it I looks think pretty f- good. It, yeah, shot-wise, I think, yeah, it, it looks fine. But past that, editing is thrown together. Audio is a bit of a mess. The audio is a mess. I think I think it felt more... It just, it just, just comparing it to Death Wish, it just felt like miles ahead, even though it was like yeah. practically the same year. Yeah. That's very true, actually. So for the enjoyability, where were we at? Really, I... I, I at a ten. I'm going to put this at a six. Okay. I would have gone four, but I've given it five because it did pass the Bechdel test. Nice. Did it? See, interestingly, I actually went three. Just about. I, I feel like, going back on this, I would like to change that to a four. Just because there were some more moments that I enjoyed than I remembered in this movie, because yeah. I think a lot of the other bullshit kind of dragged me down. Yeah, that's a bit. fair enough. But I oh, so was, I'm having to go up to a four out of ten. It was kind of isolating watching it on my own, but I yeah. knew I knew that talking it through would make me appreciate it more. For sure. Um, uh, sons, Jeff. <laughs> um, the, the it would be exactly the same. Literally <laughs> exactly just nine seconds shorter, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this film. Yeah. Um, and then, what would be the change that you would make to this? More film? Jeff. Yeah, I want. I want to. That's my second point. Is I have two. One is about a film thing, and then my Jeff change is more Jeff. So my film thing would be make it quieter, <laughs> clear up the audio a bit, <laughs> don't have people talk over each other so much. Mm. But like in my heart, I want more Jeff. Yeah, that's true. I, I put down like focusing more on like the highs and the lows of gambling addiction, and more on like the personality mm. side of it. Spend a bit more time on that rather than just filling it with a lot of. Like, I actually wanted story less lines. gambling. I thought the gambling was so dull. I mean, not necessarily the, the gambling itself, but the, the effect, effect that has it. on the people, yeah. on the characters, rather than just them playing the game. Or, yeah. You know. See, I would have actually taken out all of the gambling scenes really? and never shown them gamble because I just thought it was boring. But I quite like the gambling scenes at the end. The ones all at the, the end when you can see the better. excitement when they're the in emotion. their winning streak. That was great. Mm. I think this is early in Jeff's visit to us. <laughs> <laughs> because what's one of the best places to learn about what's happening like all of the time? The publishers. Like a newspaper, a magazine. Uh, interesting. I think he's there to study. He looks very fresh. Like yeah, I, I think he's freshly... Nubile. He. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he's just been born. Yeah, yeah so I feel like this is very early in the Jeff timeline. I can I can see that because I would say he's older in Death Wish. Just in general, yes, he seems absolutely. so oh, much older in, in Death Wish. than he is in, yeah. in So I, I, I think in this, he is just trying to learn more about us and that's why he's so awkward in that little... <laughs> Thing, like is he here yeah yeah um so i think yeah i think he's here he's early he's trying to learn about our culture so that he can better guide us I in the future <laughs> so we have to move on to nashville i'm never ever going to be i'm happy gonna pee to move before on to we nashville. talk about nashville 
because we have to honk it down for the, for the long haul for this one. I hate that film. I'd like to thank you for coming out to greet me today. All the other friends, members, and uh, some of us. What do you do? Oh, well, I know it sounds arrogant, but I'm on my way to town if I ever make it. Become a country western singer or a star. It's not my way to love you just Yeah, you know, one song in your life. Nashville, this film made me want to hurl my body into the sun. Honestly, the intro nearly made me motion sick, is my first point. <laughs> um, my second point is that I never, ever, ever want to watch a second of that film ever again. <laughs> yeah. You watched it twice as well, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. That's Cause savage, Because I couldn't man. remember anything about it the first time. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I need to watch this again. This is, out of these four, and probably out of a lot of these films that we're going to watch my favourite iteration of Jeff Goldblum. Yes, this is the thing. He is really? fucking unbelievable. Yes, yeah. He says nothing. nothing. He says absolutely he nothing says for nothing, the whole film. But he is so powerful in this yeah. film. He, he radiates he an energy. With like the big hair, the glasses, that massive ridiculous tricycle with like his leather jacket and the coloured scarves. I just think he looks amazing the in this The fact film. that in one of these scenes he's just... Doing magic. He's just doing magic, but he's also just like shaving in a bus graveyard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is. He's using like a telephone box or something, like the, the mirror of a bus. Isn't yeah, it? it's, it's, the, it's the windscreen of a bus to just shave <laughs> in the middle of fucking nowhere. He's so good. And he just turns up to every event. You just always see him just driving yeah. in or away on his tricycle. Yeah. And, and yeah, he's just like sleight of hand magic at one point, just in a restaurant in the corner. So there's something about him that's so powerful. But, there's, sorry, Karen. there's both the most powerful thing that we've witnessed so far, which is this version of Jeff. Yeah. There's also the thing that is one of the most negative energies I've ever experienced, which is people just singing random bits of a cappella songs at other people. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most draining experiences <laughs> I've ever had. It's a solid hour of just singing. There's, a, there's at least an hour of musical performance so, in this film. And really bad. And none of it's good. So an, an insight to why a lot of these performances and songs might be really bad and dull and difficult to get through is that the director made every actor write their own songs for the film. No way! <laughs> yeah. That's no way! So it's incredible. all original music. All of the musicians in the film are actual performing Nashville musicians from that era. Yeah. And they all hated it. Hated the film, hated the music. Really? And did not enjoy it at all. Oh. Um, what I find quite interesting is in the intro for this film, you know, they've got like the Nashville album coming out. Yeah, that's the thing that made me um, motion sick. Yeah, they have that. <laughs> they mention Jeff Goldblum by name. Yeah, they do. In in the in IMDb, he is just listed in the credits. He's just listed as listed as Tricycle Man. Yeah, is all he's listed as in this film. But they show the photo of his character in this film, yeah. and they announce his artist name as Jeff Goldblum. So he has to just be playing himself in this movie. There's the because no one else references him by a name at all. Mm. The only time they do is right at the beginning with his photo, and they say Jeff Goldblum. Interesting. So for that reason, I gave it eight out of eight for true for true, <laughs> true blue. blue. I, yeah, but also the energy he gives off in this film, yeah. I think, is true blue anyway. Because <laughs> he's just so uh, not not even ominous, but just you cannot pin down what he is doing. It's we very confusing. I think what I need is. Uh, all of the snippets of him in the film to be condensed into one yeah, I short so I'll I can appreciate that. it because I really didn't like you guys are so enthused about it I really just didn't get that it didn't come across <laughs> to me I think it's because I was like half asleep throughout this film sure. um, and I miss, must have like just not quite they're very been small scenes enough. each time like they're just in between like cutscenes but actually stuff, made like. it this, this, this was the hardest one to time for him yeah. Because he was in it for lots of different yeah, little so how, things how much Jeff did you get? 3 minutes and 15 seconds Is that wow. it? That's it He's not in it very that is long. Way more than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's but it's solid three fifteen of screen like time. Two hours forty minutes. This film. It man. is a long old film. Is it that long? Or am I making that it's, up? No, it's two forty eight. Is it actually? There is twenty four main characters. This film was so long. I really appreciated how it was so character driven, because so many films aren't. Shame and I really... they all fucking suck. <laughs> that no, not country all of them. singer, the the dude that was right at the start singing that country song. Yeah, oh he's my sad. god! He made me want to tear my eyes out. That of song was one of the worst things I've heard. Actually, the film opens on a like relatively good quote that I quite like. It's What's not that? actually the first thing that's said, but it's within the first minute, um, which is all of us are involved in politics, whether we know it or not, or whether we like it or not. Yeah, yeah it felt very political. This film. Yeah, well, it's actually. all leading up to like the big political event. Isn't yeah, it, at the yeah. end. Yeah, I rate. I rated the structure of it. I thought it was really interesting. Well, this is quite approach. interesting. Is that the. Um, 
like assistant of the writer or director, I can't remember which one it was, sent he sent his assistant to Nashville for a few weeks and the film and script were based off the diaries that she wrote in the time that she was out there. Yeah, Joan Tes- Tescobury. It, yeah. it was her, all her experiences. Tewksbury? Tewksbury, I think. Yeah. Jo- okay, I Joan Tewksbury. It was um, based off all her experiences. Mm. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those scenes were actually improvised. Yeah, 90% of these scenes were. Like, that's why they feel so weird, I think. Yeah. And, like, all the fights are really awkward and hilarious yeah. because yeah. everyone's just trying to make this fake anger. And I think that's why the film feels so, like jagged and strange I kind of feel like I was having a fever dream for a lot of it you know there's a large controversy spoiler for the end of the film she gets shot yeah Um, thank god I honestly can you cut that out (laughs) no no that stays be true Um, I actually wanted her to get shot mid song yeah me too I honestly thought if they were playing through the song and she got shot that would have been a great like because especially because the camera's always fucking zooming in and never staying still yeah yeah yeah. the camera's Um, odd isn't it yeah so like I think if it was zo- zooming in on her and it built and it built that tension of her singing and you knew something was up, I think if she then got fucking flapped <laughs> halfway through a song, flapped, <laughs> she would. I think that would have been a better payoff than what it was. Mm. I, I I have to say I did like the ending. I was quite fond of it. I haven't I haven't really seen many ensemble films like that before. I don't think I could, don't think I've seen mm. a, another single ensemble film of that of that like it's so epic. There's so many characters. I like how they all came together at the end. Um, the camera really... never ever finds its place. No, the camera never never does anything good. <laughs> it never knows where it's going. It's no. badly directed. Um, it took me ages to adjust to the humour as well. Because it, it does have its funny moments. Mm. But it just took me so long. By the time I understood that it was funny. You know that this like film was lauded as like an incredible piece of work. Is it? As like It got 11 Golden Globe nominations. Whoa. It was, it's, it's, I have a quote from Roger Ebert. I didn't hate it, to be fair. I'm, I'm um, so back and forth with this. I keep, like, one minute I hate it, the next second... Um, in his original good. review, Ebert wrote, After I saw it, I felt more alive. I felt I understood more about people. I felt somehow wiser. It's that good a movie. And I think that he is wrong. It just feels like... Because like, it was taken from, obviously, the, the diary. It just yeah. feels like it's a hash of ideas kind of thrown together. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, I think that's what it's that's what it's trying to be. You but, know? but I think it's that to its to its detriment again, mate. Like, but I, the, the core, the whole, the point is that music unifies people, and they they do that so overtly at the end with that. Obviously, she's shot, and then yeah, everyone's yeah, disrupted, on singing, and I, then they I, they sing, and then they they're brought together. That's like the glue of it. That's I think so, but also be. I found that really odd. Like that felt really uncomfortable to me. That that dude didn't really. He kind of tried to pass it over, like, oh, she's been shot. Don't worry, just carry on having a good time, and maybe people keep singing. And I found that really uncomfortable. Yeah, more than anything. And I thought that was a bit of a darker ending, really. That they kind of just tried to sweep it under the rug, yeah. mm. rather than just do what they would normally do and stop yeah. the event. People you know? clearly well, they're very traumatized, patriotic, aren't they? They're yeah. very, they're very proud yeah. of. Well, I mean, the film's called Nashville. They're clearly proud. Well, the director of it. turned down a different script that was set in Nashville before making this movie, but mm. he liked the setting, so he decided to just make a film in Nashville. So from the start, it's kind of like, I just want to do something here. I don't really care yeah. what you know. But one thing I will give this film a lot, of, a lot of credit for, and I do have a lot of respect for it, is the fact that all of the songs are recorded live. Yes, on, I did, I did see that on set. Everything's recorded live, so there's no overdubs or anything like that. And I do have a lot of respect for that. I wish more music films would do that. Mm. Um, also, uh, I do have an exact quote from just someone. Uh, I can't remember the name. It's one of the members of the trio. Um, as, as he's like getting something out of his room, he says, oh, hey, that's terrific. That's great. That's terrific. Thanks a lot. In like a really quick stumbled way. And it just really, it stuck with me. Um, the only other actual quote I have from this film is going to keep in theme with our hospital people taking us out of the <laughs> situation in which right at the end of the film, uh, again, Mr. Green, he's like, oh, how's my wife doing? He's just found out. So Barbara Jean's just like left the hospital. She's okay at this point. He walks in, um... I'm calling him Mr. Green. I don't know if that's actually his name. It, that that is what he's listed as is Mr. Okay, Green. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he walks in with his daughter, a uh, niece who is from California, um, and he brings flowers for everyone. And he's like, "How's my wife?" Um, and this nurse just says, "Mrs. Green expired this morning." <laughs> so good. Which is, that's stuck in my head. Yeah, it's brutal. Mm. Yeah, Mrs. Green expired, expired yesterday is what I put. 
expired, expired is such like, a horrible like way like to put some, it. some milk yeah it's fucked up man <laughs> Yeah, it's really bad. It does that though. It brings you up, and then it like it gives you some good news, and then it and then it gives it subtly slips you some really bad news, and it does that quite a few times. Yeah. So yeah, let's go through the ratings. True Bloom, I gave that eight out, eight out of eight. Yeah, because yeah, he's complete. powerful as fuck. Absolutely. Okay, eight. Uh, what did you guys put for craft? Like how well you thought the film was made? I fucking hated the way the film this film was made, mm-hmm. so I put it at two. Um, I gave it a three just because the bit of respect that I gained from them doing the live performances and okay, recording them yeah. live but besides I, that the sound is awful it's, it just randomly dips in and out of silence there's just conversations are way louder in one person's voice than the other yeah. one is it's just, ADR is just like saying something completely different to what someone's mouth is it's all over I the feel place. like using I feel like there's a really good film in there um because I quite like the repetition of like the the van talking about stuff mm. Like, I think if that was cut in and the film was, like, a good hour tighter, I think that could have had a really good, like, pacing to it. Yeah. It definitely is way too long. It overstays its welcome so much. Like, it was a chore to get through. It doesn't need... We don't need to hear the whole of every song that someone tries (laughs) to sing. Yeah. I'd give it a three because I felt like it must have been such an operation. Mm. Yeah, that's why I kind of gave it a bit more props, but it just didn't. That's fair enough. Um, Enjoyability, I put two out of ten. One. what? One. <laughs> I'd give it a four. I'd what? Give it a, I'd give it a four. What? I didn't hate it. I hated this. Honest, <laughs> honestly, I couldn't wait for it to end. Yeah, I was so happy Post when it was over. I watched it. <laughs> Can't believe you watched this twice. I ha- I had to. Just wouldn't do it to myself, mate. But yeah, the fact that Elliot Gould has a cameo in this is yeah, quite that's, strange. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Yeah, I thought that was quite um, funny. And I think if this film was about Jeff... It would be a top tier film. That's my that's my one change. It's just infinitely more Jeff in this film. We can't say that with every film. I know. No. But yeah, it's it's not that I necessarily want. I don't want what I I don't want this film. I want no. a film that's about the character that Jeff plays in. Because does film. he live in a school bus? <laughs> does, does, so okay. So my theory about this is that he is just on a nice day out. He's just off. But he's one of the Nashville musicians because he's on the album at the start. But that makes no sense. Oh, he's on the album. <laughs> yeah, like oh, on, on that album right at the start, where they're talking about, they mentioned right. Jeff Goldblum by name and put up the photo of that. See, character. I feel like they probably had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff, and yeah. they just condensed it into yeah. this loose narrative. Yeah, when they well, it was going to be two one. films. Was it? Yeah, yeah and because it was too long. TV series at one point. It was going to be too long, so they made it. They were saying it had to be two films, so, and then they just ima- they just made it down right. to two hours forty eight. So my change would be, I would take, I'd, 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 I'd ask the, the, the production team to give me all the raw footage, mm. and I would go, and I would, <laughs> I would go to uh, the re-edit. Caribbean, and and I'd live in in uh, a chalet for a year, and I would just like edit it myself, and I'd just get like a really sick two hour film out. Of <laughs> yeah. It. I, I think that's possible. Yeah. If I, think, I had enough time. I think all of the performances are fucking bad a lot of the films. Also I wish oh, the I old know. country guy died rather than Barbara yeah. Jean. Although Barbara Jean did she did make me uncomfortable. She was strange. Yeah. Shelley Duvall's in this as well, but kind of has a bit of a nothing role. Where where is she when? in this? She's that woman that's got like wears the always wears like really bright coloured clothing and is sleeping with that guy from the band. She wears like the really high socks and like braces and weird hats and bags and shit. Hmm. She's like one of just the characters they follow okay, throughout yeah. Nashville. There's so many characters in this film. Isn't yeah, it? it's just she kind of wasted wasted her, I think. Cause she's she's a good actress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this film passed the Bechdel test, but it's not surprising. Did it? I was, I was going to ask about that actually. Yeah. Imagine if it had this many characters and it didn't. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, it only just passed. Okay. There's like one or two scenes. Okay. Sons Jeff. Would have been less of a light in my life. Honestly, it was not even worth my time. I sat up whenever he was on screen and just fucking relaxed when he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> he was the yeah. thing that kept me going because I just wanted to figure out a piece together as much as this character as I could because it was just so ominous. Mm. Where does this man fall in your bloom of us? This Jeff. So I think he's on a day out. Yeah. I think he's just gone to have a look around because he heard something interesting was happening. <laughs> um so he's just gone to spend like a week away somewhere hmm. and I think this is like it's it's 100% after California split he's learnt enough about us that he can just about blend in yeah. even though he still looks like a crazy person yeah he does completely he's still not blend he doesn't blend in enough that people don't notice him yeah 
Um, but he... Because you can't just do ominous magic in the corner of a cafe and people won't notice you. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's testing the waters at this point. Do you think so? Do you think he's like... Testing the humans. Seeing what people will call him out on and what yeah. they won't. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think that's, I think that's right. And he's gone to a place where there's such is such full of unique characters mm. that he he will blend in to an extent but he can still yeah kind of try and reach it. towards just, those edges a little just bit just fucking with mm. people a bit you know yeah. having mm. some fun that yeah. sounds like Jeff to me which is why yeah. I think this is so far the closest thing we've got to some true bloom straight up yeah <laughs> yeah we're on the path to true bloom yeah <laughs> uh, I gave this Jeff just three out of eleven Jeff Jeff yeah I think that's accurate if you want to know how much I clocked out from this film, um, I have a note here saying that Jeff is visible on screen at minute 37. And then I only have two notes between that and Jeff at uh, 20, 2 hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> Jesus. And the only, the only two notes I have between that is she expired this morning and she's from California. <laughs> and then two hours have just gone. Yeah, it really was just... A chore, man. You function strictly as a go-between. For which I'll get paid? 10,000. Cold cash. Charles Bronson is St. Ives. What are the odds in a Rams-Dallas game? He'll bet on anything. Okay, 500. Even his life. I'm gonna take you out, go-between. Now is a fantastic time to ask you, Beth... God. <laughs> what you thought of Death Wish 4 <laughs> that you watched instead of said I was. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically. <laughs> <laughs> I I was on. This was when we were supposed to record the other night. Yeah. But I was in such a shitty mood and wanted to murder everyone, so we decided not to. Um, I was, I was An on the sofa. An hour and a half before we were planning to record. Yeah, literally hours before. Um, <laughs> Seb came in. Obviously, I'd worked like a fourteen-hour shift. It was yeah. a bit delirious, anyway. So, um, me and Seb were just talking, and we were talking about um, St. Ives. And then, <laughs> I, when I had the realization that um, I'd watched the wrong film because <laughs> I thought the plot was completely different to what it was, so I watched Death Wish Four. I wasted two hours of my life on That's Death Wish sad. Four. That's sad. The crack down, which I actually really enjoyed to be fair. I say wa- wasted, it wasn't a waste, I really enjoyed it. I was like, I don't remember Jeff Goldblum being in that film at all. It's because he and wasn't. Because he wasn't. He wasn't in Death Wish <laughs> 4. Jeff Goldblum was not in Death Wish 4. <laughs> That's great. Um, so I had to watch St. Ives uh, thinking I had an hour and a half until we were recording this podcast. <laughs> the film's so about an hour and 25 bits. long. I was skipping bits. I was trying to make time like drastically. <laughs> Have you watched it properly now? I've watched it, I watched it properly. Um, <laughs> But it didn't really go in, if I'm honest. The, the one line thing on here, on IMDb, is a crime novelist is hired by a shady character to negotiate the return of stolen confidential documents. Yeah, so he, he, he has to retrieve some four things. What is it? Four bits of paper. Yeah, just journals. literally just confidential journals. documents. Don't, yeah, journals, yeah. And then there's, there's a very sexy British woman that really yeah. fancies him. Yeah, for some she reason. does. She does. She clearly yeah. does. And this is the, th- the common theme I noticed within his films is that he he's a catch basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't he, get it. In the other film I watched, he has this like beautiful young wife. But that's just like the era of this like action hero, isn't it? Of just like. But he's he looks like a leather shoe. He does. He does. He does. But I mean, it's same with like all the James Bond movies and all that absolute trash. That that always just has to be the beautiful woman that falls in love with him against all odds, you know? Yeah, because a beautiful yeah, like, woman um, will look at a fisherman's bag and say, yeah, I want to fuck that. <laughs> it's like Paul, Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah. It's, it's got that same... All of Kevin James's movies, let's not lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is actually the film I have the fewest notes about. Interesting. <laughs> same. Um, um, well, Jeff Goldblum's character is just listed as Hood 3. Yeah. Um, um, and my note about him is, Jeff, you look young and scared. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's in the elevator, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, and he has the part where he's just like they push. What's his character? What's Saint Ray, Ives? Ray Saint Ives. Ray Saint Ives. Yeah, they push Saint Ives down the elevator shaft. He just grabs on to yeah, Jeff Goldblum's like, ankle and he's just like <laughs> the whole time like screaming and kicking yeah. his leg. I just around. think yeah, I, I gave this two out of eight for True Bloom because 
Jeff Goldblum was 26 at this point. Yeah. And he got sat by a 57 year old, and I just don't think that would have happened. <laughs> um, so true. Yeah, I just, I don't think this was high on the True Bloom because he, he's not himself. This is in his troubled period. This is, I think, I would say this is just before Death Wish. He's on his way yeah, down. Yeah. You know? oh. Yeah, he's taken, he's taking a tumble down that, that dastardly <laughs> hill of crime. Again, um, the music is amazing in this. Yes. So one of my first notes is the intro tune bangs. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I, for a, I for a moment thought it was Herbie Hancock again. Well, no, it's, it's Laszlo uh, Schifrin. Schifrin, Fantastic sorry. name. Yeah, Laszlo Schifrin, who did all the music for the Rush Hour movies, which also had amazing Incredible, music in Incredible, yeah, movies. that makes sense. Um, um, like orchestral funk, it's fucking... And multiple times throughout this film, there are sexy noir saxophone zooms. <laughs> where, like, there's just like a... <laughs> and, like, it just zooms in on a person. Um, usually, it's usually, I don't know her name, I can't remember her name, either her character or her name as an actress, but the lead. The woman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Janet woman. Whistler is her name in the film. Um, yeah, it it very often zooms in on her face while it does the sexy saxophone. Wow. That's thing. a classic. Yeah, yeah a classic it's incredible. Film I is. love it. I love it so much. <laughs> um, uh, what I don't get, which kind of, for me, undermined this whole thing, is why did they hire just a crime novelist? Because he, cause his books are influenced by the stuff he does. It's a cover. Right, okay. The fact that he's a novelist is a cover for the fact that he's actually just like... Does all and this they shit. know that, right? They yeah. know that. And yeah. they have this, like, mutual... Mr. Brocade. Understanding. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a character in this film that appears for just the first scene, and it's his lawyer. Yes, um, gets him out of bed, doesn't he? Gets him out of his bed. My first, my literal first note for this film is this man looks like a hot dog baron. <laughs> um, it's Michael I, Lerner, man. He's been in quite a lot of things. Yeah, I, that, I saw him yeah. and I was like, he looks like he would sell hot dogs for an empire. <laughs> uh, and he's also the guy that leans out of the window and says, Hey, hey, come on, you mothers, get away from that car, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> he is, yeah, he is, isn't he? Because he asked the guy to like, look after, don't let anyone near his car yeah. when he goes into the and building. And immediately he goes upstairs and there are people like hassling his car. <laughs> Like, this film, for me, the first act, I actually was quite invested in this film. Yes, 100%. And I was actually really enjoying it. Yeah. Um, and then I was just like, oh, wow, it's still going. How long was the film? <laughs> uh, this film was it's only an hour and 34 minutes. Okay, but so the shortest of our films. Yeah, it, it was yeah the shortest of them all. Um, but it was like, the first ha- act just had like a lot of really dumb action. Like, the action in this film is, so, I think it's just done really badly, but to the point where I found it really funny. It was a bit like The Room, you know, it come back around to be really funny. Mm. Um, it was these, like, swing at me, drops down the elevator shaft with, like, his hands, yeah. like, rubbing across the metal yeah, uh, things and then just swings into the into the next um, open floor. During and... that fight scene, he throws a punch that sounds like a gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because then once he then started to, like, get more information about these documents, like, in the second act... It was just dragging as he was getting yeah. bounced from like person to person and just having yeah. kind of really boring conversations that didn't really give you much. Yeah. And it was just, I, I, for that point, I was just like, wow, this film is really still here. I felt like the character was bored. Yeah. I yeah. felt like he was bored of his own life. Yeah, but yeah when he was probably bored of being a crime novel. He showed no emotion. That's just fucking Charles Bronson. That's Charles Bronson, Bronson fair. Yeah. He's a whacked a whacker. <laughs> um, there's, there's, there is actually in the last third of this film a fantastic conversation mm-hmm. um, in a toilet about how he also has a problem where he can't go in unless it's in the first stall. Oh yeah, do you remember this? Yeah, it's because there's the dude that's next to him that he's swapping the money bag yeah. with, isn't it? And he just has this whole thing of like, yeah, yeah, I can't go unless it's the first stall. And this old guy comes out of the thing and he's like, I tried to finish quick so that you could do it. I understand. I yeah. have the same problem. <laughs> I tried to hurry. I heard what you said about not being able to go except in this first stall. You know, I'm like that at home. Except I can't go on the first floor. I got to go upstairs. We both have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that made me really happy because I thought that, that, was was some good, that was some good toilet bonding. There was a really weird moment when St. Ives is first getting hired by Mr. Procaine. Uh, St. Ives, the first thing he says... How do you know I'm not in business with a thief? It's like, why would you say that to the person that's about to give you ten grand to go find a couple of journals? Yeah. It's yeah. such a really weird thing to say. There's, um, I laughed, actually, at the man in the washing machine. <laughs> oh, that cracked me up so much. Yeah, yeah it's supposed <laughs> to be You know when you were in the reveal. kitchen and I was laughing? It was, was it I that? was laughing yeah. at that. That's good. It's, I would say it's been really hard to not talk about these films because the fact that we're yeah. living to, all living yeah. together at the moment yeah, it's, it's been very yeah. difficult to not talk it's about been these a films. Struggle. And he doesn't he stay in hotels all the time? Yeah, he lives in he he lives in Hotel Lido. Yeah. Yeah, he says something weird about he's like she's like why do you live in a hotel and he's like 
why would anyone not want to live in a hotel? <laughs> or something to that effect. Yeah. And it no, just doesn't no make Charles, any sense. why would you want to live in a hotel? Yeah, it really, it felt very partridge. <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah. bit, actually. Yeah. Um, what else have I got here? Yeah, like, putting on the action was just like really weird and sloppy. and Yeah. Like the gun knockout and oh, when God, he hits from the yeah. back of the head is ridiculous. Him dragging Jeff into the elevator and just like silently hanging <laughs> in this like shaft just looked really yeah. weird. Um and I was like literally laughing out loud when he was swinging out of the elevator. Yeah. It looked so dumb. Um, yeah, and then later on, that MD looks at his hands when he goes back to like Mr. Procaine's yeah. house after that, and he's just like, "Oh, you've got some small friction burns." And it's like you have just slid two floors down just holding metal wire. Your skin's <laughs> gonna be obliterated, mate. And what's his excuse as well? It's something really na- I can't really even lame. What it was? That dude, the kind of kind of therapist, kind of doctor. Strange guy, strange energy, yeah. good facial hair. Spoiler alert, he is the guy behind stealing yes. the whole yeah, documents, he's the isn't man, he? At the end. He's he the is. dude behind it. The and there's, there's a dialogue and in she's like evil. that scene. I mean, I find the dialogue really basic in this film. Yeah. Because mm. um, there was a point where he's just like, Why are you doing this? For the money? And he goes, Hmm, for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill you, Abner. For this money? For that money. <laughs> it was just so bad. And like the end to that, like, big climactic confrontation because the British woman's in on it as well isn't she yeah the way they end that massive confrontation with him holding her holding a gun at him is he just chucks her in the pool <laughs> Honestly, because I'm... his lawyer turns up and then he, she just chucks him in the pool and he's like yeah arrest her like that's I've, the whole thing. I've written in, in all caps just pool toss yeah. <laughs> as my last note for this film <laughs> um, so yeah let's go through the ratings then I guess for this yeah so True Bloom low very low yeah, pretty low. He's so, at his. I mean, he's at a low point in his. I put it as two because specifically because he got sat by a fifty-seven-year-old man. Yeah, I think I think two's yeah. right. Just more powerful than that. Yeah, he's way um, more powerful. Craft. So I literally gave it one out of nine because I thought I the would film agree. was made quite yeah. badly. Oh uh, yeah, one or a two. Um, Great soundtrack though. That is true. The music is the shining light of that. Yeah. So enjoyability, I put three. I really didn't first... enjoy this. First act I enjoyed. Second act was just it was dragging me through it. I'm gonna give it a four. And the third act made me laugh. So four. I gave it. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four. What? I I feel. I give it a one. I feel fondly about it. For I some would reason. watch this movie again. No. Yes. Yeah. I Over would watch it again. You guys should watch Death Wish Four. That was a good movie. <laughs> oh, skip two and three. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, well, I'm gonna go back and watch two and three. I think. Oh, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna become a Death Wish fan of the yeah. series. Do you think? Definitely. Um, no, I'm, I'm gonna wa- get a Death I'd, Wish tattoo. I'd watch this again. Um, there was at one point a really horrible laugh as well mm. from a man, um, but I actually I would happily watch this again. Yeah, I would happily watch this again. There was actually a moment I'll point out before we move on to the last couple of things where I thought it was quite funny where Saint Ives gets out his wallet to like bribe the guy at the front desk of the hotel before that dude jumps mm. out the window, um, and he gets out his wallet to just like get some money out to sort of get the guy to give him some information and then as soon as he gives him the information he just shuts his wallet and puts it away and doesn't give him any money and walks off and oh, it just made yeah. me laugh I didn't clock that yeah. Didn't, yeah, he literally doesn't give him a cent he just opens his wallet to show there's money in it the guy starts talking he goes cheers thanks shuts the wallet and puts it in his pocket That's and walks incredible. away incredible thought it was great Race and Ives it might be an icon <laughs> <laughs> um, Sons Jeff oh. I've Ives would have slightly less burnt hands and he would, I wouldn't have had that beautiful moment where he swung out the elevator. Yeah, it's, it would have made not that much of a difference yeah. in this film. He's yeah. pretty low stakes in all of these films at the yeah. start. Like, so I was sort of blasting through them. Um, one change you would make in this film? Can, can, can I say recast Charles Bronson again? <laughs> no, you can't say recast Charles Bronson. You can't say more Jeff Goldblum. Okay. That's not mine. I'll say that. What is yours? More dumb action scenes because they were the fucking shining yeah. light of this movie for me. They made me yeah. laugh out loud a lot. Yeah. I liked how bad all the action was. I'm, I'm a sucker for really bad action. It really makes me laugh. Mm. It's a wholesome spot in my yeah, heart. Yeah, fair. It. I would change it to be Death Wish 4 so that I <laughs> didn't have to watch this film. <laughs> That's I, amazing. I, I think this is the film I've, en- I've enjoyed the most. Uh, Jeff's in this film for two minutes and eight seconds. Nice. All in that scene. Yeah, all in that one scene. Yeah. So, so what do you give enjoyability then, in general? Oh, fucking the lowest. Out of ten, I gave it three. I, one. You know what? I'm gonna go back and say four. Four. Because I actually think I enjoyed this a bit more. I enjoyed this film. One. I enjoyed this <laughs> okay. film. Um, so then, out of what would you give out of Jeff Goldblum? J. One. J. 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 So overall, you just give it J. 
Sorry. No. <laughs> I would I would give it just a single F, just a Jeff, just a Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, three out of eleven. Yeah, three out of eleven. Beth. Yeah, three. Cool. I gave it a full Jeff. Give it a full I Jeff. Gave it a full Jeff. So okay. four. Four. One hot Jeff. Right. One smoking hot Jeff. So where does that leave us? With these four movies, the first four that Jeff ever appeared in, we need to put them on our table. Okay. So, put forward your arguments, I guess, for what order these films should be in. Um, I think this is the this is my favourite. You think Saint Ives should be okay? I'll, I'll write this down for each one. So, Seb, you think number one is Saint Ives? I think Saint Ives, then Death Wish, then California Split, then Nashville. But Death Wish and California Split are like tied. I, I like them equally, but Nashville, I don't, I don't, I don't have any care for. <laughs> I don't have any fondness for it. Beth, for me, it has to be Death Wish, yep. Nashville, California Split, yep. and Saint Ives. Death Wish Four, and then Saint <laughs> Ives. Saint Ives is definitely last. Um, and whatever else I watched in this last week comes before Saint Ives. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, I think I might be with Seb and put St. Ives first. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, Is this how it's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> no. You two ganging up on me and my decisions. <laughs> Even though I really don't like Charles Bronson, I think I'd be the same and I'd put Death Wish and St. Ives at the top. You know, I, I think Death Wish is a better movie, but I enjoyed St. Ives more because there was a lot more Agreed. dumb shit in it yeah. that I found funny. So I think I'd put St. Ives first, Death Wish then California Split and Nashville because Nashville was one of the worst things I've ever seen yeah um, yeah so where, okay to find a middle ground in that where do we feel comfortable about rating these movies then because you said St. Ives is the worst we've really all put Death Wish in our top two so are we happy now putting Death Wish first yeah Death Wish moment? is first for now thank yeah? you if you're going to put Death Wish first for me then I'll up St. Ives by one <laughs> that's all I can do <laughs> that's as much as I'm willing so to barter so, so that now beats Death Wish 4 <laughs> yeah. yeah, what about Death Wish? We haven't talked about Death Wish 4, guys. <laughs> You're the only one that watched it, Beth. <laughs> That's fine. Part I'll give your spin off podcast just talking about the Death Wish series. Part of me wishes we didn't realise that you watched the wrong film. Yeah. <laughs> Until we, but I would have looked like such a Muppet. Yeah. Well, I would have sounded like a Muppet. Yeah. Um, so then, second, what's the consensus on that? I really think Nashville has. California split. Something like. Uh, you can't argue with Golden Globes. I can. <laughs> I can. That film was awful. Like, I would... I could not put that any higher than third. You have to me. respect, like, the the sheer, like, the, the goals of that film. The I, epicness of that I film. I respect the fact they recorded live. That's where my respect ends for this film. It had 24 main characters and they all had big bustling personalities. I wouldn't say so. I would say so. Brevity is the soul of wit. Whoever said that, I stand by it. What do you say? Brevity is the soul of wit. What's brevity? Less. <laughs> That's basically a way of saying less is more. Yeah. Less is more. I think fewer characters in a shorter film would have made it infinitely better. Yeah, They tried enough. to do too much, we'll just We'll just agree to... Um, that I'm right. No. <laughs> obviously. Well, so second, right? So we only got four movies. There shouldn't be half. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what are we saying? Death, Death Wish, Wish, California then, Split. Yeah. Um. Then can we say Saint Ives? Oh. And then Nashville. Because I put Saint Ives as first, so to put it third hurts me a bit. That is tough, actually. I kind of prefer that in second. Because <laughs> this will change, obviously. Oh, Things are going to go gonna in gonna between change, these. Isn't it? This yeah. is just the first four that are on the okay. table. Yeah. So. Death Wish. St. Ives. Okay. And then California Split. Yeah. And then Nashville. Yeah. Well, obviously I don't agree, but <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> stuff will come in between these and everything anyway. It's yeah. Gonna change, just wait so. till we watch Jurassic Park, then yeah. everything's going to fucking change. So that's where they are for now. That's just the four that are on the table. Yeah. yeah. That will change. Yeah. Um, so I guess that was the first four films. Yeah. yeah. We will come back with another four. <laughs> yes. For the next step. Hopefully and then after that will be... Doing feature films.